It's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them. Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket, and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And, you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationships with uh, the University of Miami. Half another good block, and Toretta lays it out. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are going to make you a lot of money. <laughs> oh, she was smart. So now, here he is. The great one, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. <laughs> there he is. The great one himself, Lamar Thomas. How are you, man? How are you doing this week? I am doing wonderful. Can you hear me, Gary? We've had we so can, much. LT. All right, we can all right. hear you. All right. <laughs> um, welcome, everybody, to... I guess the final Lamar Thomas show of the 2022 football season. Yeah. Um, as LT gets ready, you see it on his shirt to go up the, tur the Florida Turnpike, take his act to O-Town for a couple months and serve as the assistant head coach of the Orlando Guardians. Orlando Guardians. Orlando Guardians. I got it right. Of the don't, don't do what our head coaches did on ESPN and say Orlando Magic. And then <laughs> <laughs> T Buck did that really? Yeah, he was on ESPN and he he kind of got a little nervous and he said Orlando Magic. Oh, why did I say that? Orlando Guardians. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh but yeah, so this is the uh, final show of the 2022 season of the Lamar Thomas show. Uh sponsored once again, I guess I Better get those uh, better get those sponsors up on the screen for uh, for one last time. Yeah. Lamar, uh, the show's been sponsored all season by Canesware, the place for all your game day needs. And right, right now they are uh, your spot for holiday shopping. And uh, you can go to Canesware. They got a lot of merchandise because of the way the season went. And stock up for yourself, for your wife, for your friends, for your kids. Uh, no matter what you need, uh, Canesware will have it for you. And the show is also sponsored by the law office of Christine Rosendahl Esquire, PA. She's based in Palm Beach. There's the black card that LT carries with him everywhere he goes. You never know when you need a good attorney. And uh, Christine Rosendahl is always there whenever anybody calls her um, in, in need. And uh, you would be wise to... Uh, give them a call, get yourself one of those black cards, put it in your wallet like like Lamar does. And I, I got one in my wallet. And she and will travel. And she will travel. And she will travel. How far, Lamar? Well, I mean, shoot, she's, she's licensed in Florida, so I guess she'll take all of Florida if you need her to. But she knows a lot of uh, judges and lawyers all over the state, so uh, she's pretty good. You think she would she would she uh, come to Orlando if you needed her? 
Well, let's hope. Let's hope she. Let's hope you don't need her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I want. I want her to come and speak to the team on uh, a lot of things because again, we want to uh, educate these young men on life, uh, some of the the negative things about about life, and we want her to come up and speak to our team. So it'd be great for her to come up. All right. Well, you see the number on your screen right now, 561-512-6199, 561-512-6199, Christine Rosendahl, ESQPA at hotmail.com. Um, she's your go-to lady if you ever need somebody to get you out of a jam or, you know, whatever, a little advice. You know, we all need advice from time to time. So Christine Rosendahl will take care of you. Well, gee, the yes. season's over. Yes. All the coaches are out on the road recruiting, which comes with its own drama. So I thought a great place to start tonight would be recruiting. And, uh, you know, you did it for many, many years in your mm -hmm. stops as a college football coach. You had some wonderful moments like recruiting Lamar Jackson. I mean, that if that alone could hold up a resume forever, man. When you look <laughs> at what Lamar Jackson has done, when you look at, you know, what he's become – in the National Football League, and you discovered him down here at the Deerfield Beach High and uh, Boynton, Boynton Beach High. Boynton, Boynton, Boynton Beach High. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. My bad. I, I'm, I'm so used to all those. Oh, you disappeared on us for a minute. I'm used to all those prospects coming from uh, Deerfield, but um, yes. but no, you discovered him at Boynton Beach, and mm -hmm. you took him to Louisville. Miami didn't really go after him at pretty much late, all. late, way too late. Yeah, they weren't. And I, from what I remember, they didn't really have any vision whatsoever of what he could become. Yeah. And uh, so you took him to Louisville and the rest is, is history. So, you know, you've got a long history as a recruiter, Lamar, mm -hmm. and it's tough for these guys, man. They're, they're traveling every day. Yeah. They're, they're making multiple stops. They're flying all over the place, driving, going to high schools, getting in the car, going to the next one. Yeah. Are your memories fond of recruiting or, do you not miss it for one second? Well, I loved it. I mean, I, I, I completely loved it because I was recruiting, especially recruiting South Florida, uh, Florida in general, to be honest, which I didn't really care too much. Uh, Atlanta and uh, Mississippi, uh, let's see, some of the other places I was able to go, uh, Ohio for sure, um, I, I, Kentucky. I, I didn't enjoy it. But Florida, I just – it was something about me knowing the, the – the power of what I had done in the state of Florida that could get me into any place. You know, it didn't matter what was on my shirt, whether it was Hampton University, Western Kentucky, Louisville, or the University of Kentucky. I was getting in the door because of what I've done being a Floridian uh, through and through playing high school, growing up in Florida, playing high school, uh, going to college in Florida, and playing professional football in Florida. So that's what I enjoyed about it because – these coaches knew me, you know, they knew me. So they wanted to talk and we talked ball, we talked players, we talked kids in the area. And it was just, I, I really enjoyed. And I, I enjoyed seeing guys grow up. You know, I enjoy seeing guys that maybe I might've coached in um, at the Dolphins Academy, like uh, 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 the uh, what, uh, Daryl, Daryl son and all, all these, all these guys that, uh, uh, what's what's the kid named American Heritage? Uh, Aronde's son. Um, there was the DB that's playing. At, well, he's in the league now, playing for Denver. Uh, he, he, uh, God, I think Patrick Sertain's son. All these guys we coached when they were little kids, and to see them now grow up and and you're recruiting these guys, and it's just outstanding. I, I just some people it's a grind, and it can be a grind, but I, the fly down. I knew where my hotel was going to be. I always stayed at a Hollywood Beach Marriott. Did you? And because I, yo, because I thought it was out of the way, you know, from everybody else. I kind of had my own little spot. I knew what I, the people knew me. Get up for breakfast. They knew I was all out of that hotel by like six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning on my day. Had my you didn't my even get day. to see the sunrise, did you? No, 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 no. The sunrise is while you're driving. You know, as you're going to these schools, you try to be at your first school at right at the crack of dawn, whatever school that is, whether it's in Homestead, whether it's um, 
whether it's in the city at Northwestern or Central, you know, you just had your areas Columbus, you had your Gulliver preps, you had your, you know, you just, everything was cordoned off, you know, South Day, you know, you had all these different types of uh, your, your map and you kind of knew them. And, and for me personally, as I became an OG in the game, as they would say, I tried to pass it on to other guys I would see on the road that I knew they were, they were green and I would see them like from the University of Buffalo. I go, hey, have you ever recruited South Florida before? No. Okay, let me help you out, brother. Let me help you out. Where, what schools are you trying to go to? Well, you can't get that one in the same day. The traffic is going to blow your mind. Okay, you got to cordon things off. So these are some of the lessons that I was able to teach along the way. I just, I really embraced um, sitting down with the coaches. Uh, most of them, maybe I might have coached against or played against. Uh, it was just, it was just a lot of fun for me. But the majority of the kids you recruit, you don't end up getting. Yeah, you don't. You so don't. What's what, what's that like? Um, well, you know, my whole thing was I, I enjoyed sitting on the couch with these kids, talking to them, getting an opportunity to talk to them about life. Um, you know, being able to sit there on the couch with the, with them and their parents, you hear questions from parents that were kind of outlandish a lot. You know, like when is he going pro? You know, what's his chances? I'm like, I. I don't know. There's so many things that are going to happen in between that. But you sell the university or you sell what you are. Um, and, and, you know, you, you don't get them all. And I'm OK with that, because for me, it was about getting to know these young men, getting to know their parents. And, you know, they still text me. They still hit me up on Twitter. They still you know, that's what it was about for me. And, and any time they had a question, I was always there for them because you you're meeting you're not only meeting them, but you're meeting their families. And sometimes it doesn't go right. Red wine. I remember red wine. We were sitting in his house. We thought we had him. And yep. Miami came in at the last Boom. second. After the dad had talked trash about Miami. And we were like, what? You know, but it was nothing we could do. But that was okay. It was he okay. talked trash until they offered him until they offered, <laughs> and, right. and, and took him. You know, there, there were all kind of crazy stories. You know, it was like the dad just broke us off. And said, stop. Just so you guys know, he's going to Auburn. And we're like, Auburn? And we're like, we called, we, we were like, okay, fine. The mom was looking at us all crazy and me and T-Buck. And they were like, we don't know anything about this. A lot of times the fathers want to be recruited more than the mothers. I mean, it was crazy. It's just, just you, you learn the whole dynamic of a family. But the great stories are when you go into like a kid, like a Nicholas Norris house, home, and you're sitting there selling the university with Bobby Petrino sitting beside you, and you're you're doing your spiel. And before Bobby Petrino can even bust a word, the parent says, "Stop, stop. You don't have to say anymore. My son is coming to play for you because when I was a kid, you gave me your jersey and your gloves, and it it changed my life." Kids don't forget that, man. Yeah, that 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 type of story where you you know you're meeting these people or you you met somebody, you know. I had some some instances where the, the parents are like, Yeah, man, I remember we used to hang out at the club, man. You know, you was always 100 with you know, it was just it was it was a feeling of being back, being comfortable, being around the parents, because mm -hmm. most of them I grew up with, or you know, we ran this, we ran in the same circles and it was, it's just an awesome experience. I, I, I just, I miss recruiting. I'm sure, um, I was gonna my, ask wife, you my, my wife doesn't miss it, but uh, I miss it because you're on the road and it's just you, you just, it's just like being in sales. It's like you, you're selling the university, you're selling the program. You're trying not to sell the head coach too much because head coaches and coaches change, but you sell right. the university. So you do your research. And you don't mind driving, so no, no. you know you you wouldn't have had a problem with that. Oh, especially in Florida, I love it. I mean, I, I I'll hit South Florida, then I'll drive up North Florida, and I, I didn't like the Panhandle too much, but I you know I just enjoy being in a comfort zone where my worth, uh, my credentials could get me in the door. When sometimes, and you go to Texas, I I also went to Texas and they didn't give a damn about who I was. They say, right. hey, just so you know, yeah, he's going another guy in Texas yeah. or Mississippi. Hey, just so you know, he's going to Ole Miss. 
Yeah. So you don't want to talk to him, you know. So it was it was kind of the dynamics were kind of weird. You know, Florida Florida's not a bad driving state, uh, except for that I ten corridor between yeah. Jacksonville and Tallahassee. Now. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's I mean, boring. That, that that's a nightmare because you that's just boring. like you're all you have to look forward to is Tallahassee, and that's you know. Well, you, I've gone through there. I've gone to Live Oak Swanee. I've gone through there. Um, I've gone to uh, and driving to Tallahassee. Uh, you know, you you kind of. You kind of know that Tallahassee, fam- I mean, uh, Florida State has the, that's their territory. So I can only imagine what Coach Solinger and those guys felt coming into Gainesville, being able to to steal a kid. It's a high. It mm-hmm. truly is a high because you're competing against probably where the kid grew up. And so you're trying to find, hey, if you want to stay here and be here forever, and what if you don't make it? You're going to be, this is the only place you're going to ever know. You know, you try to throw those little things out. It's a lot of dynamics to recruiting, man. It's all about wordplay sometimes um, and knowing, and doing your research on the schools that are recruiting against you. Do college football coaches like Mario staff that's out recruiting right now, do you think they typically enjoy recruiting or do they hate it? Well, I would hope that I would hope being at the University of Miami, you would love it. I mean, this is a that you holds up. I mean, even though it had a losing record, but I could only imagine being able to walk into a school with that you on my chest. Um, it's just like the Gator head. It's just like the Florida state. It's, I mean, some of those schools hold a lot of weight. And when these um, people at the front office see you, they all of a sudden, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's different than wearing a Hampton university. They're like, what the hell is that? Or, you know, a West Kentucky, that blob red blob <laughs> thing, you know, that, they don't know what the hell that is. But when doesn't matter what that, the record is. Uh, no, it doesn't matter what the, it could have been under damn undefeated. But wow. when you see that you or that Gator head or Florida State's uh seminal, um the, the, the recognizable uh trademarks or logos. It's yeah, it's it's, it's interesting, you know. It, it, it's like I think about these things always at, at this time of year, and obviously this is a very critical recruiting year for uh Miami Lamar and, and I know the uh, voice of the fan, Bruce Warner. Uh, he loves every minute of recruiting. He texts me almost every day, wants to know what's going on. So um, let's bring him uh, into the My party man. here. Bruce. Hey. First of all, um, you got this shirt. Guy, I texted Gary like last Thursday before I went with my wife on her tour up north, which was spectacular. And I even brought Mark Caesar to the show on Sunday. Oh, that was man. Wild. Yeah, he's, he asked for everybody. Um, but anyway, I don't know what's going on with the recruiting. I see what I see, which is, is, is McLean going to go to Bama this weekend, Gary? Do, do you know? I don't believe so, but until the weekend's over, we won't know for sure, Bruce. Uh, you know, hey, our, you our, know, our old buddy T-Rob is up to his old tricks. Yeah, well, that's true. Anyway, so I saw T-Rob trying to steal Miami's five-star uh, defensive back, LT. Yeah, well, I, I saw a commercial for the XFL today on all the teams and the jerseys and stuff, and I thought of you, man. Listen, oh, yeah. I don't know. This may be the last show we ever do, but I got to tell you, thanks for having me on. I really enjoyed these last two years, and Gary as well. And I'm going to take a ride up there somewhere, yeah. January or February. I'll let you Anytime. know. If I want to see you Anytime. guys play. Anytime. I think LT will be able to find a ticket or two for you, Bruce. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for it. I, I want a sideline guest. The hell with the ticket. VIP <laughs> treatment, baby. VIP. I'll take it. I'll take <laughs> it. Hey, the, hey, the great thing about being in the position that I'm in, you you get to actually meet with the vice president of the team and you talk about decisions. You know, it's not you're just a, a position coach. You're like in line and you're sitting there with the head coach and you're throwing out suggestions about, you know, for one, we were talking about the music when they come out or what tunnel we were coming out. And I said, hey, T-Buck, when you go to do your Orlando media hits, how about this? How about you say to the Orlando fans out there, the Orlando Guardians fans, hey, hey, we know we got some music people out here. You can make a song for us to come out to a contest. And if it's you, we play your song. And the VP was like, oh, my goodness, Lamar, I love it. But these are the some of the decisions you get to make, and I'm loving it. Hey, is your roster complete, or where are you with the roster? <laughs> no, we still have the uh, supplemental draft coming up in um, – in uh, January, that was for uh, USFL, <laughs> USFL guys. And, uh, supplemental draft. Yeah, awesome. supplemental draft. Uh, <laughs> hey, well, I, what, I, 
Are you guys allowed to take underclassmen that declare for the draft? Yeah, right. If they don't get drafted, you can have them. Or, or what if you, well, your your season starts before the draft. Yeah, that's well, a great I, question. How about a guy that goes in the transfer portal that, that doesn't have a program right now? Are you allowed to just snag him? You know, I, I was thinking. I was thinking about well, getting. I'll, in, I'll back you up legally. Go ahead, take him. I was <laughs> I was thinking about getting in contact with with Prime Time after this year, and and if if Sedora wants to have a, a year professionally, see if we can get him in the XFL, and then he can trans transfer that into the NFL. I don't know. Who knows. Did you see his entrance at Colorado when he just got the Colorado job? Mm. I mean, he walks into the room, has a team meeting, tells everybody that he hopes they go in the transfer portal and give some mm. spots. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> I'm coming. I'm here. It's all about him. Me, 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 me. What do you think about that, Lamar? Well, um, <laughs> myself coaching. Come on. And- and Here we go HBCU. again, not talking about other coaches. Here we go again, Gary. I was, myself, I'll tell you what, I, I was like, oh, my God. I couldn't yeah. believe what I was watching. So, so myself coaching at an HBCU before, I was happy that Dion was able to come in there for a the couple of years and bring attention to some of the the the, the bad things about the HBCU. Um, they, they, they need they – need, more structure they need more money they need there's a lot of things that are going on and he was able to bring attention uh i I noticed it while i was there but he was able to use his platform to bring attention to some of these things and i think it was great he did what what he said he wanted to do he wanted to um uplift that program um build a weight room he gave some of his own money to the program he brought that program and i think the swag and the MIAC. uh the HBCUs to a national forefront because, hey, they even had college game day. So people yeah. were talking about them. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't expect him to be Eddie Robinson and be there forever. In today's age, you know, the Kurt Ferences and all these guys, you know, they're, they're a dime a dozen. They're, they're maybe even smaller than that. Uh, I didn't expect him to be in that thing for a long time, especially I thought that maybe he would uh, wait until his, his son got out, his sons, but Hey, the opportunity arose. I don't blame him. Um, he's still going to try to help Jackson State out in a way. I think he he. Uh, I think everybody understood this was a vehicle for him to. He was going to put his heart into it, but his vehicle. He was going to use that vehicle also to uplift himself too. So I, I don't blame him. I he's mean, got I, a it's tough job, like, man. He's got a tough road ahead of him. But Colorado, Lamar, Colorado, like right. you know, you go through that whole thing, and you're you're selling J State, and you're talking kids into coming there, yeah, and 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 you know, you're building your brand and the whole thing, and putting on a show, and then you then you leave Jackson State, yeah, for Colorado. He could have gotten an ACC job now or maybe next year or something. I mean, Auburn, no problem. Florida right. State, no problem. Although Mike Norvell kind of put that one to bed for a while. But, but we don't we don't really know. You know, we, I mean, obviously, you know, his his plan, he felt comfortable with Colorado. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. I mean, obviously. Like being, like being it's, comfortable it's, in Siberia because that may be where he's headed. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, it's, I, it's, it's it's a great it's a great place to, to have a whole roster turnover. I tell well, you, one, one thing he's got going for him, there's no expectations. That's for sure. correct. That's Look, what I'm talking but, about. But LT, and like, I think he let a lot of people down doing that. You know, you can't have it all ways. Like, I I I think he let a lot of people down by doing that. Well, I who I really feel well, the kids he's for. recruiting this whole season so far to come to J State. <laughs> They're in a lurch now. He, he took who, off, and, and so that's that's part of it. Who, who <laughs> I really feel sorry for are those kids that came to Jackson State to play for him. On um, his dream, yes. yes. But but I also feel sorry for those coaches that aren't that aren't going with him to Colorado. There are a lot of good coaches that were on that staff that they're probably going to still be at Jackson State. I mean, so you think about it, if you're on that staff and you are you have your dreams, too, of going with him, and he says, no, no, you're not going. He didn't take any of them, uh, I don't I, think. I think maybe one or two of them. But And it's some good – Gary um, 
Harold uh, Flea. He's a great coach. He's a good coach. He's he's uh, like this. He, when Dion had his toes removed, he was there as a as a head coach, and he did a great job during that time. He's been in HBCU for a long time, and you know I thought he was going to get his come up. So you never know. I mean, I see where he's added um, Taggart to his staff, and you know there's talks of Kelly being on his staff. Uh, you know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see who he's who he hires. He said he's gonna have have the best staff in America. So I'm waiting to see. He's got a lot of work to do to top Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Record aside, I mean, in terms of credentials. But I don't know, man. We're not gonna turn this into the Deion Sanders show here. But uh, I felt for a lot of my friends and a lot of people that I know what he was doing there and what it meant and the respect that he was bringing to the HBCU arena and all those things. And, and I thought he exposed himself as being somewhat fraudulent in bailing the way he did so quickly to go to a program in Colorado, to go to, going to Colorado. Like, like that's not like, I don't know. I mean, I, I would have been okay if he went to like hey, an SEC but, school. But, or, but, it, but he's a head coach, man. You know, yeah. I think that's, you know, he wasn't he wasn't afforded any um, opportunities except for Jackson State. The, the power fives didn't want him. They said he didn't have any experience. Um, so he was able to uh, create his own path, create his own path. And so he's going to make his own decisions. I don't blame him in that case because, right. you know, you they they turned you down. They they turned their backs to you. And now all of a sudden they see some part of your work. You know, right. now you get to choose, and he chose. If he, turned, if he so we'll turned what Colorado around, he could name his price at, the, yeah. at, a, at a much higher level. But that's not going to be easy. But he can, because right now, like I said, there's no expectations. If he goes seven and five, and then eight and four or something with them, right. yeah. you know, what? then he'll get a bigger, bigger job. Let's see him try to turn him down for that. I tell you what, I tell you what, um, Jackson State is in a better place. So, you know, he left them in a better place. So, All right. So then um, let's put on our positive Deion Sanders hat then. All right. And All right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to switch uh, pictures here. And I'm going to ask you another question. Can he make an impact, since we're talking about recruiting tonight a little bit, can he make an impact as a recruiter at Colorado? Do people in the state of Florida and other hot recruiting hotbeds around the country – have something to be afraid of with Deion Sanders now at a Power Five school. Well, I think his name carries a lot of weight. It's going to depend on his staff. Also, you got to put good guys in there that can um, they can go go into these homes because obviously <coughs> head coaches can't go out on the road that much. You know, they they're not out on the road that much. You see them when you get to campus, but you don't really see them out on the road except for like you know only a short period of time. So he's going to have to put together a good group of guys that are going to be able to go out and sell the uh, University of Colorado, also Deion Sanders, um, you know, and that's 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 what it's going to boil down to. Uh, but he his name carries a lot of weight, and you know, if he is able to get some NIL deals uh, in Colorado, then you know. He'll 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 do okay. I mean, it it's gonna be interesting to see. You know, eight games, eight games in Colorado. That's a good deal. If he can get eight games in Colorado, he should be able to move on at some point. Because, I gotta uh, believe his agent made sure that the NIL part of the equation was in place before he went there. Oh, like, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. If he, if he, he didn't, didn't have to do that after that, I don't know yeah. what kind of recruiting hotbed. Colorado is. I'm sure he's going to be tapping into Florida and some of these other southern states. Oh, of course, of course. He's, got, he's already gotten tagged over there, and right. you know, um, what's the David Kelly that was uh, at FAU and UCF? He's been in all these places in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's he, he knows what he's he's going to he's going to get into Florida. The question is, is whether these kids are going to want to come out there because right. that it's cold out there now. You know, but they but you can't smoke weed out there. So <laughs> some kids might want to come. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. No um, doubt about that. So um Jason C, one of our 
the viewer is one of my favorite guys. We joke around, you know, we got this little saying that we can walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, he says that everyone seems happier now that the hurricane season is over. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Are yes. you happier? I am so much more happier that my stress level, you know, I just, it, I, it was a bad season, five and seven. It's not what we envisioned when we started this show uh, this year. Uh, and that, that was, it was it was it was bad to watch. It was it was gut wrenching at times. And I tell you, I, I really to ha actually have to sit through that Florida <laughs> State game to the end. Brutal. That was that was brutal, man. I, was I don't brutal. know if the word's happier, guys. I think the word is relieved. I'm relieved. That too. It's over. I'm not happy. I'm definitely not happy. But I'm relieved because now yeah. it's in the past, and we have yeah. to things to look forward to we hope i don't want to move on to these recruits because that'll make me angry we can move on we can move on yeah, we can this move on. on right yeah i know one guy that's happy or relieved whatever word you want to use that's mario cristobal because now he's in his he is in his element. uh wheelhouse yeah. yes now this is his element this is his time this is where he thrives and mm -hmm. and he is out on the recruiting trail slugging mm -hmm. it out and people are trying to steal his recruits and uh he's having to make power moves to keep him secured and uh i'm sure it doesn't hurt that he's probably got the biggest nil budget in america behind him mm -hmm. uh to to get and, things done and, and and did you see the blueprint of the uh, the little rough draft of the the 100 million dollar facility type yeah. deal where yeah. the hell is that going it's going um it's <laughs> I going was like, to I was trying to I was trying to look at it. Go, where the hell is that? I don't care. Right. Where? So picture, um, picture the practice field. Right. The the east side of the practice field. Uh, mm. You can envision it probably better here. Uh, and there's like that little creek there. Mm -hmm. And this building is going to be on the other side of the creek. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. And then if you see that walkway, they've got where the players are hanging out. Yeah. 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 Um, that that's that will the take the players to the indoor practice facility, uh, and okay. the practice and the practice field, uh, and the indoor practice facility will be expanded. It's going to be a hundred yards now, okay. and uh, so that walkway will connect and probably involve a bridge over the creek. Um, I would imagine. Yeah, and, and go we got to the engineers. Indoor. We got engineers. Yeah, and then the thing I really like, Lamar, is if you look in the upper right hand corner, you can Who see is that? that's Mario up there, man. That's, what I that's, that's, that's Mario's office overlooking the entire empire. He can <laughs> he, he can see everything from up there. He could he could he could see the practice field. He'll be able to see the indoor probably. You know when it's open. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's um, that's really really cool. So yeah, you know it, it's funny because. You would have expected this to leak out through like this ma major, major announcement and, uh, you know, with great fanfare to kick off a fundraising campaign and the whole thing. You know how this leaked out? They had to file paperwork, Lamar, with the city of Coral Gables. And, and part of that paperwork included those pictures. It has wow. to. It, it has to, right? How wow. much? A hundred million A hundred million dollars? Probably 150. Yeah, about 150 right. million dollars. Yeah. Some things to you, LT. And then they're also going to build softball stadium. They're they're going to move the track. I think. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say a softball stadium? I think they're adding a women's softball. Wait, team. wait. Yeah. So you add women's softball, you might be able to bring back men's golf. Maybe. Maybe you got to add a sport. And I talked to Radakovich about that. I said, Hey, man, how do we not have golf, man? Why don't you add gymnastics? For the guys, <laughs> gymnastics. <laughs> yeah, you say, well, my wife, a gymnast. So oh, okay. I just, I just okay. say, hey, why don't you add gymnastics? That's a woman's sport. He said, I love the idea. I added the last sport I added at Clemson was gymnastics. The problem with gymnastics is not where they perform; it's where they practice. Uh -huh. So you got to build. That's why he said that's you got to build a whole part. facility yes. for them yes. for them to yes. practice. Yeah. Yes. So let's get back to football if we can. All right. Since I was somewhat out of the loop the last week, all the coaches are staying, Gary. We don't know. We we don't know. I mean, there's been nothing, no movement in that regard to this point. They're all out recruiting. 
All right. And what and so what about some of these big name guys? I know I, I see everybody asked you for percentages or Matt for percentages. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think about Samson? Now he's basically claiming nobody's in the lead. I don't 80, know about that. Yeah, 85%. He's gonna announce December the 15th. He's um Lamar Samson Oklahoma. He's a five-star offensive tackle that looks like he's ready for the National Football League right now. Mm -hmm. He will be their third five-star recruit. Mm. He looks like Orlando Pace. Mm. He's big. He really he's does, yeah. Big. I mean, Bryant, Bryant was really big, but he was tall. This guy looks like Orlando Pace. He's just big. You know, yeah. but we got to get him. You know, I, I think one of the things that Mario said in that press conference, his last press conference that I, I, I watched, there was some truth to that as far as there were a lot of truth to a lot of what he was saying, but I love the fact that he talked about, you know, they gotta they gotta build depth. Yeah, you know, that, that's a whole thing, man. You're not gonna win championships until you build depth. I mean, you can have you can empty your roster, but the guys you're bringing in here, they gotta be able to be stacked up. And a lot of guys don't want to come here to be stacked up, they want to come, you know, this transfer portal thing which is weird to me. Some of these guys haven't played in years. Some of these guys didn't play last year. Some of these guys started games. Some It's weird. Some of these guys are making their – I mean, who, who's going to take you? You haven't played in years. What are you thinking just because you're recruited by these guys? Like some For some people, six years ago. There's some super seniors in that thing, man. Yeah, so man, it's a, How about weird. some of the best quarterbacks in the ACC? Yeah, yeah. It's it's. This is uh, that's true about Drake May. He's he's in the portal. No, I don't that's think so. That's right. I think that was a bad rumor. But his, but, but his OC went where? Where did the OC go? He went. Uh, I just read something about him going. Somewhere. Longo goes. Longo took a Long, job. Long, yeah, Long, Longo took a job, and uh, I just saw it. I just saw it too. Yeah, I'll tell you. So, I'm that's, why, that's why. That's why. That's why his name might be mentioned. Wisconsin? No, I'm somewhere. Hmm. Oh, Wisconsin. it might be. It might be Wisconsin. Wisconsin. You're right. Wisconsin yes, hired him. Why would you shot like, Dennis? You shot Dennis Lopez. Is that a is that a move up? You're the OC at North Carolina, and you you go take the job at Wisconsin. Is that a move up? I don't think so. Especially when Mac Brown is late in his career, and you're still holding out hope. Maybe you can get the head job. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you got all these people, I mean, it, this is scary, man. You got all, I couldn't imagine looking at my roster and going, what guys are going to leave? What guys on this roster are pissed off because I probably didn't play them? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what guy? Pope's in, the, Pope's in the portal again. Pope is like a ninth, ninth year guy. He probably has two doctorates by now. <laughs> Jeez. Hope is the guy that I think he should be on the Orlando Guardians. <laughs> yeah. Do what? Do you think he can make the team, Lamar? No, I don't think so. No, uh, I don't. Uh, he's on. I mean, I, no, I mean, if he really did something for one year, then something happened, and he whatever. But he had never accomplished anything. He really hasn't. I mean, I, he's got Rambo. He got a good guy. I got Rambo. I'm good. You got Rambo. He's good. I got one. I got one guy we can wear the U stuff together. And I got, actually got three of them. We got three, three of you guys. You got Borgallis, right? Yeah, Borgallis and and old the, the older Borgallis. Bo yeah, yeah, the older Borgallis Bo and the D lineman. D lineman, oh. I think. He, uh, dang, I can't think. Of, he wore number one. Yeah, at one point. Damn, I should know my guys. I I, I was half asleep on the defensive. Oh, draft. Ger uh, Gerald Willis. You got yeah, Willis. Yeah, yeah, I was half asleep on deep. I was sitting there going, and we decided we went D lineman. We we probably stacked our team with D linemen and other teams were taking linebackers. So we got to come back in the supplemental draft and we have to draft linebackers. Yes. So, um, you know, in the ACC, all these starting quarterbacks are bailing into the portal. I don't mm -hmm. understand that. Like, even like you take this uh, Phil Jerkovich guy, he's at Boston college. Mm -hmm. He's being tutored by Rob Chudzinski. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who's on the staff up there as an analyst mm -hmm. purely to work with the quarterbacks and the offense. And two years ago, they had a decent team, and he had a really good yeah. season. Yeah, Last running year, back. This year, they were terrible. Yeah. yeah. And he was the face of the team, and he bails and goes to the portal. The guy at NC State was a, a similar, like, face of the team, gets hurt this year. Right. So he had a disappointing season. 
And he goes in the portal. Yeah, he's good. They're both he's good. good. Leary, Leary's good. They're both of these guys I just mentioned. They're good, Bruce. To the yeah, point where if Tyler Van Dyke were were suddenly to say I'm leaving, yeah, both these guys would be strong candidates to to replace them. That's how when good you announced for the portal. Can't you go back? You can go back to that school. Maybe some of these kids do it to get more NIL money. They're using it Maybe, as a Yeah, could be. Because where is he going to go? These guys have to be – they don't want to go to a losing team. They're good enough to go to a team that can win. But I Lamar, think, go ahead, like, here. like how how is a coach that these guys deal with this? Like can you imagine being the head coach at Boston College? You're trying to put a program together, and the one player you got that's like a little bit of a difference-making talent that you could build around and go to the portal and try to surround with some dudes and stuff just bails on you? Like how are you ever supposed to get anywhere, which is – the greater majority of all these coaches in college football. Well, man, that it has to be tough, man, because, you know, you're sitting there again, you're looking at your roster and you're just like, well, who are we counting on to come back? You, you're like, we don't know. I mean, we, you, you honestly don't know when some of these kids hit the portal, most of these coaches find out by social media, you know, I mean, this is, um, uh, they want to make a big splash on the social media and say thank you for all your time and this and that. I mean, and then you have to go out and try to find replacements. Do you find freshmen who you grow, you, you mold them at your program and then they're going to leave it's for a horrible. higher bidder. It's horrible. I think this thing is going to maybe ruin football. Look, you yeah. could ask LT and anybody else. Nobody has the answer because this is the first of its kind. There really is no answer. A lot of these guys are going to suffer because of what's happening, especially when you're quarterback. Is the kid from Wake Forest in the portal too, Gary? I believe he might be. Yeah. He might be. That kid's real good. But for that system, he's good. I don't know what else he can do. He wants a bigger yeah. stage than Wake Forest. Yeah. yeah. Somebody problem, will take him. The problem is also – and I've talked about this. It's your team chemistry. Yeah. You, know, you got guys coming from all different programs for all different reasons. And most of them are selfish reasons. So you're going to have a bunch of selfish guys on your team. Well, that's happening. Oh, um, yeah. do, you have, do you have an explanation as to why Garcia is staying or is he still maybe not staying? Um, I've heard to this point he's staying. Uh, my guess is he does not have a better destination right now. Mm -hmm. than, Who's that? Who's that? J.J. Garcia. Garcia. I mean, he blew himself out of the water with the year he had. Yeah, right. So he, he it, had the you know, opportunity that, that TVD had last year coming in for an injured quarterback, and he, he failed. Right. Yeah, he so heard, he's he heard better himself. off staying, yeah, he get, getting better, yeah. finishing school, getting his degree because, you know, if this college football thing, you know, may may take a turn and get really good, but right now it's not going so great. And yeah. he would be wise to pave his future with a degree and what? and finish that. And yeah. then he, he goes to the Guardians and becomes their star quarterback. We can see yeah. the hand running on the wall for LT right now. His wheels are spinning. I'll keep my eye on Jake. <laughs> well, he gets a chance to compete. Yeah. When Tyler leaves. Yeah. And then if he doesn't get the starting job at that point, he's not better and ready. Then he could go in the portal and still have, I think, two years left to play somewhere else. So, he's well, fine. you know, he was hot. He was hot when he wasn't out there. <laughs> you know, and then we got out there. It's like, man, it's that the backup quarterback, man. He's the greatest quarterback in the history until oh. until he takes a snap. We, we <laughs> spent like two story. weeks talking about how they wanted to just bury TVD and let this guy be the starter for two consecutive shows and all of a sudden he had he started out with those two touchdown passes and everybody was screaming we were right gary you're a bum you know what we're talking about and Never then that. Oh. Yep. that's how it happens yeah i hope the fans uh, and um and those of you who are listening tonight uh can relate to this hopefully i mean i hope everybody learned their lesson a little bit like you can't be so overreactionary to to everything you, you know Somebody throws a couple good passes against an average or not below average opponent doesn't mean they are ready to be a ready for prime time player. Uh, and but I did think with in the in the case of Jake Garcia Lamar that there were some signs in the pit game that he was getting it a little bit. Like he, yeah, I think yeah. he had 193 yeah. yards in about a half in that game. 
Right. I mean, that was a positive way to end the season. There were some positives about each and every one of the quarterbacks. Now it's just the, the every, but it was just it was no identity to me on offense. Um, and each and every one of those guys did a couple of things well, but they did more wrong. And I just think that with awful O line play, uh, you know, no, nobody, nobody's, nobody's really talking about Maribel and the job that he had to do. I mean, you know, you you hearing about the the coordinator more than anything, but shit, that old line was terrible. terrible. And maybe it was because of injuries. And I know that's Mario's guy; he's my guy. But that old line was awful. You yeah. know what and I mean? If, it, if it you can't run bad. the ball, if you're the quarterback and you can't run the damn ball, you know they're coming after you. What well, choice do you have? Well, well, also Bruce, when you get hit hit in the back of the neck three times in a row by the, the same guy's man, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, there there were just some some guys out there that just it was awful to watch, and um, you know it was a bad year. Now I know he's a good coach, but they just it didn't translate. I mean, you look at some of the coaches we have on the staff, and you know you can mean to tell me that Maribel is is that bad of a coach? That, that, that you no, know, it's just it was just a lot of things going on. You mean to tell me Charlie Strong is a bad coach? You mean to tell me that Steele is a bad coach? You mean to tell me that Jason Taylor can't get guys to to keep contain yeah, as defensive true. ends. I mean, I, I don't think those guys – I know those guys are bad coaches. It's just that, you know, you got to give some of that up on those players too now. It's But it's a marriage. It's a marriage. And yeah, you, you, you have to be – You got to buy into it though, LP. They got to they gotta buy into it. And as a coach, you got to buy – you got to somehow – you have to somehow get them ready to play. Somehow, you, you know where Mirabal went today. Where'd he go? There's a lineman from Alabama. He started, yeah. he started Davey 25 of the last 27 games at Alabama. Lamar, he he's mm-hmm. uh, he, he played as a freshman and a sophomore. Mm-hmm. He's played two years at Alabama for some reason. He's leaving Alabama. I know the competition's getting pretty tough there, but there right. to, but he you know, he just isn't feeling Alabama anymore. He goes into the transfer portal, he is now. Probably the top transfer portal mm. target for the Miami Hurricanes, and Mirabal is up there today. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm guessing Mario is not. So Mario's uh, right. supposed to go like within a day or two. I thought. I yeah, heard. Okay. yeah. I mean, his guy's but, name is JV and Cohen. JV and Cohen. I know he's not Jewish, but uh, <laughs> that's his name, and he's a big kid. He plays guard. What's the What's the matter? <laughs> I was laughing at you, the Cohen. <laughs> but but he's um he would walk in here and be by far the best offensive lineman in the program. Yes. Mm. What what do you think he's commanding out of the NIL budget, Lamar? <laughs> like See, that, that's uh, the thing, he, man. You know that's the thing. Um, I what, what, it, it's it's a two it's like I from what I've heard. Now I'm not in the building, and I'm not in college football anymore, but. <clears throat> They pinpoint a guy, and then all of a sudden NIL jumps on, and then they get that kind of deal kind of closed, and then they then they commit, you know, or is it vice versa? I think it's vice. Commit? It's well, it's it's supposed to be vice versa. It's supposed to be. So, it's supposed to be. So yeah. what I if me reading the tea leaves, what I would say probably happens is that kids know the parameters. Okay. Of what the opportunity might be at at a given school, Miami or whatever, uh, but they don't actually get to negotiate and sign the deal till after they have committed to the school because it cannot be an inducement. Right, right. It's not allowed to be. That's the it's not allowed to be. Not, not allowed, allowed to, be. to be an inducement. I, I can only How do you imagine. work around that, Coach uh, Coach LT. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine Coach Solinger, Don Solinger coming in my house. <laughs> And I said, hey, you know, coach, man, it's, it's going to cost you about 100 G's, man, 100, 100, 100. Kids, man. Are you – I can hear him say, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you you better put another zero. Are you, for this. Are you effing kidding me? You, you might know, want to put another zero no, on but, that. No, this, this back, in, back in the day, back in the day, right. back in the day, back in the day. I remember telling the coach from a school he had a briefcase, and I said, you don't have to open that briefcase. I'm not coming to your school. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how much money you got in there, but it's not enough. 
Not not and what I meant by that is that I'm not going to sell my soul for what five thousand dollars. You know that, that 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 you know kids don't they, they they see the money back then. You know you might see the money, but it it doesn't last your lifetime. Right. You know you don't sell your soul for five thousand dollars, and they they took advantage of some some guys. You know five ten thousand dollars. I don't know. I just told a guy, hey, don't you don't have to open a briefcase. I'm not coming there. But it was nice to meet you. <laughs> well, I, I I I feel secure saying that Coach Mirabal like couldn't carry a briefcase big enough wow. for Julian Cohen for what well, it's going to take behind well, the scenes to to you know the, the parameters that Julian Cohen is going to have to see wherever he goes. And I have to believe Miami's not losing this one. Like Mirabal looked like a midget Santa Claus with a big old <laughs> big, big old sack on his back or something. This, I'm, I, I'm telling you, this one is gonna. This one might set an NIL record. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Mario may have to drive up in a Brinks truck. That's what. He so you, to. you had an interview with John Ruiz yesterday, Gary. I had a town hall. On, oh, you didn't tell me about that, baby. How'd it go? It was great, other than the fact that his his wires in his house were freaking out, and the audio was terrible. So oh. after the after the fact, I had to go try to doctor it up the best I could so people could hear him. But right. now nah, he's awesome, man. That guy has single handedly saved the Miami Hurricanes athletic program. He really mm -hmm. has. If if he if he wasn't doing what he's doing, Lamar, Miami would be out of business. I mean, it, 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 like like you know, you look at where the program is right mm -hmm. now and what it's gone through and put it into the environment that's out there right now with all mm -hmm. this NIL and, and everything. And you have, you give Miami a very minuscule budget and uh, it, the program, it would, it would be over, man. It would be over. I like, had a chance. I had a chance to go sit down with him um, and his sons. Uh, they're, they're, they're interesting now. They're businessmen uh, that, you know, he is a, he is definitely a businessman. And sons have a lot of ideas. Some of them are out there, but they all have their ideas. And you know, hey, it must be nice to to live in a house that beautiful with the big. Oh, did you go to? His, you went to his house? Oh yeah, they have white. They have white couches. I felt. I know. Kind of it's bad. Unbelievable. I've been there a few times. It is unbelievable. Like there, unbelievable. There, yeah. Then when you walk in, there's like um, there's water. There's like water. You can fall in there. I couldn't have that house. You know. And I might come home drunk and fall in the fucking water and die. You know, the, the fish pond or something. You know, it's, it's like a fish pond in the house. Like, Did they take you out back? Did you get to oh, go out I went, back? Oh, oh, I went out back. It wasn't no taking me. I said, shit, I'm going to – I need to see this, man. I, I don't know when I'm – because I used to go down that way to visit Preston Wilson, who played for the Marlins. He lived in that same neighborhood. So uh, when I was driving down there for that business meeting with Melvin Braddon, Topo Bain. And I was like, man, I've been in this neighborhood before. And I got to his house, you know, the gate or whatever. And we go in, and, you know, of course, the butler comes to the door and points you in the right direction or whatever. And, um, you know, it was and I kept looking outside going, Jesus, is that a boat out there? Is that a boat out there? Yeah, so, what, three. I think it was three cigarettes back. Yeah. There. Yeah. So I had you to know, go out. cigarette racing. I went outside. I said, "Hey, man, I'm going outside, bro. I got to check this out. I'm gonna take me some pictures and everything. Like I'm, <laughs> I, I almost had like my own rap video out that thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he had a party when he started nil. Yeah, and they had their first meeting. They had it at his house, and he had the whole team at his house for like a a dinner and everybody hanging out. It was really really cool. Uh, there, the kids there. were like awestruck, man. Oh, like, you, no doubt. Why? Yeah, shit, I was, I was awestruck. I'm shoot." But you know what's amazing, Lamar, and you could tell me if you agree with this based on your interaction with him in this meeting. He's really a fairly down to earth guy. Like, oh, yeah. like oh, yeah. he is just he's like one of us, man. Like, like we he, we could sit with him, and and you don't feel like he's looking down on you or or anything. He goes, I, I can tell you this, Gary. He wanted to tell us stories about how he supposedly ran a four three at the church. He told me that on Tuesday night. He said he ran four four. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he done. He's taking it up a little bit because we were all looking at him like this. <laughs> and I might, I might have lost the deal because you know I said, "Bullshit, <laughs> bullshit." 
You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But he was like, yeah, man, I was fast and da 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 And I said, okay, man, we just had a great conversation. He is a good dude. He's but a I, good I, dude. I can tell, yeah. being a lawyer, he's always looking at that angle, too. Like, he, you know, when we were presenting the the the, uh, the plan that we had, he was looking at every angle. And uh, it was it was interesting to watch, you know, and to watch a, the, his sons throw their ideas out there about what they were – planning and um you you're, you're sitting there going well it must be nice to have daddy behind you boy yeah i mean but but you know what they're nice kids too they yeah really they're are a good kid. one of them played at miami played baseball yeah. we talked about that um it was fun it was, but you know they're, a, they're just they're all they're all nice people and he yeah. doesn't you know he makes his kids work like he doesn't yeah. just like yeah, just like that's what he told me. money at them and stuff he yeah, makes them work and they, he's not gonna all, spoil them rotten and stuff like that like you know, I mean, all right, yeah, they're yeah, they're probably, they're probably a little spoiled. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're spoiled. I don't want to get too, I don't want to get too carried away here. Yeah, I mean, but I, no, but seriously, like you know, when you're doing business at the level that he's been doing it in the mm -hmm. community for as long as he has, you're an attorney, you're suing people, things mm -hmm. are contentious. You know, you have, you have some deal. Not every deal goes right. Some are going bad. You know, he had some stuff in Homestead that upset people and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, you're not gonna. Everyone's not gonna be your friend. Right. When you when you live your life in that arena, and well, and and you know when he first burst onto the scene, you know a lot of those people came out of the woodwork. You can't mm -hmm. trust them. Mm -hmm. You know, don't believe a word he says. You know, all those things. Um, and but I'm telling you, this guy has saved Miami athletics. I mean, look at the basketball team that they, they went to the Elite Eight last year. They're they got a really good team this year because of him. Mm -hmm. You know, he went out and he got Nigel Pack, who's a decent guard, and more than anything, the uh, the center, Omir. Like, yep. that guy is a beast, man. I, I keep watching this guy play basketball. I keep thinking, man, I don't know, like, like Norchad, don't go play basketball in Europe. Come play football for a few years at Miami and get a – and John will give you yeah. a big NIL deal. Like Jimmy, you should see this kid, Lamar. Jimmy, Jimmy, uh, what was Jimmy's name with the red hair? Graham. Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham. Graham. This kid is a way better athlete than Jimmy Graham. Wow. Like, like you should see this kid. Like, uh, he is a beast, and he is aggressive, and and like I don't know, like you, I don't know if you'd make him a defensive end or a tight end or 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 whatever, but like this kid is 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 the real deal. Well, this is all poss possible because of John Ruiz. And, right. uh, you know, and that's before you even get to football. So we didn't see the results of it this year because of the record. Right. Um, but I really think Miami's going to be in it to win it with this uh, Julian Cohen kid who will make an immediate impact on the offensive line, will walk on campus, be the best player at that position uh, without question. And then you're putting him with these five-star offensive linemen that they're recruiting traditionally. Now they're going to be true freshmen. Yeah, they're going to be true uh, freshmen. That's the thing. They're going to be true freshmen. Yeah, but this Julian Cohen can play multiple big. years. Yeah, and then, well, you got, then you got Zion coming back and then that's yeah. Cooper coming so, back. So everybody Cooper talks about back. Zion. All I hear is Zion, Zion, Zion. Is he, is he the savior for us? I mean, is he? No, I'm not gonna say he's no, the savior. Man, he, he, he had a bad knee, and they right. they they tried to clean it up, and right. I guess it didn't go real well. And then they had to go back in and do a little more, and and you know he had a, he missed the whole year, and now he's gonna try to come back next year. We need to talk about some of these guys. We need to we need to go down the list of some of these guys that that are. That are uh, on the in the portal that that went that left Miami and some of the guys that came out. For example, today, I guess I saw where um, the corner was coming out. Um, I mean, he, he really has Tyreek. Yeah, no, not Tyreek. DJ Ivy. DJ. Yeah, he really has. You know, pro scouts are drooling over him, and he might even be a good pro. Who knows? You know, well, he's, but, a, he's a graduate though. Yeah, but he what he got about two, three degrees. He's been in college, he about 26, isn't he? <laughs> nah. That yeah, I don't know if he's got the speed for the National Football League, Lamar. He's an old guy. I think he, I think he might prove us wrong, man. I think I think that kid, the NFL scouts drool over this guy. Now really? yeah, I don't know if it looked like Tarjan play like Jane or something. I don't know, but you know, um he's got length. 
Yeah, he has length, and they 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 look at it and go, wow, you know. So he goes out, and runs a great time, you know. Um, Which he who knows. Won. He's like probably about a four six. He doesn't have recovery speed, LT. You should know about that stuff. He can't stay with some of these kids. He can, can you play corner at four six in the NFL? No. Well, how about moving him to safety? That's what I just said. No, he's not play. like he's not built to be a safety. Man, he's, he's, built a now. he's a he's a good looking guy now. He yeah, is he looks good. I mean, but he's been in, but he but this year eight for him. I yeah. mean, some oh, of these I, guys, I, some of these guys been in college, man. Pope. Pope was um Pope been in college about nine years, man. He got he should have four degrees by now. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the guys you think that Miami, other than Cohen, Miami's pretty high on in the in the in the portal, Gary. Do you have some names? I, I know that the Texas AM, whatever commerce wide receiver kid, he's a big kid. It's too, it, it, it's too soon, Bruce. Uh, you know, they're they're throwing a bunch of offers out there. These kids are getting offered by so many schools. Yeah, uh, it's gonna take a few days. For all that to to, to sort itself out, um, you know, is there we've anybody got anybody else on our roster that you think is going to go into the portal that hasn't? Oh, one hundred percent. I think you know what you have right now are the guys that wanted to go in the portal, right? Because they're they're, they're upset. They're yeah, upset about something or right. Those know, they're, right. They're, yeah, I mean, those they are know guys that are in the portal now. But here's the thing: if I'm at unless I'm at a lesser school, why am I going to take? One of these guys, they don't even play. Like you, you know, the kids get confused. They think, oh, because you recruited me then. Well, shit, I didn't even see you play at Miami in two years, man. I can't, I can't mess with you, homeboy. You know, I, I just I, saw I, Avante Williams tweet that he's been offered by Maryland. Okay, <laughs> how about that? I mean, Maryland. I mean, I, I, me personally. I, and I, I might, somebody might say something about this, but I look at Maryland step down from Miami, even though they probably had a better record. I'm yeah, just he, saying he had to go. There was there was just there's a whole lot of reasons. Well, was, what about was, what about um, <coughs> Rogers? His father made a comment. Now, he's still here, isn't he? Well, here's what I was getting at, Bruce. So, like right now, the guys you see in the portal are the guys that wanted to go in the portal. Mm -hmm. Now. Once this staff gets done recruiting and gets through work in the transfer portal, they're going to know what the real number is, yeah, right. where they need to get. And to get to that number, they are going to have to tell some of these other guys that they just can't play at Miami. And 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 there and there's going to be a whole other wave of guys that are going to be told they have to leave. Yeah. Okay, I understand that, but Kamari has whoever has control over their own situation. So if they get in there now, they may have more opportunities at other schools. If they keep waiting yeah. and waiting and waiting, the numbers that are of people that are going to want them are going to diminish. So it's a double-edged sword. These well, that's what I said. The guys that's that want to go to the portal are in the portal. That's why some, some guys jumped in. He wants to play here. The kid. Yeah. That's why yeah. some guys well, jumped in. Yeah. That's why but, some guys just jumped in. They just said, hell with it. I, I yeah. might well get on in there. Get on oh. with it. And none but of them were going to play. Are you surprised right? that Rooster left, LT? He had to leave. Right. He ain't playing. He, um, he, was, after this after numbers. this season, did you see the Pittsburgh game, LT? I guess we haven't had a show since the Pittsburgh game. Yeah. They weren't even tackling Rooster. Yeah. They were tackling the football. They didn't care about Rooster. Yeah. <laughs> they all they wanted to do is pull the football away from him. He's a marked yeah. man now. He is a target. He has he had to leave. They could not put him on the football field anymore at Miami because he was a major liability. Well, he ran I appreciate, hard. I, 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 I appreciate yeah. everything he did for for the University of Miami, and uh, we, we wish him the best. You know, um, I like watching that kid. You know, obviously, obviously, this was a rough year for him, but he he gave us a lot of joy the year before, a lot of joy. Yeah. So, and, and somebody will day. take him. Yeah, somebody, somebody will take definitely him. take him. Yeah. I could see Red Lashley taking him if he can. You know. He shouldn't be running between the tackles, first of all. Plus, we don't even have any offensive linemen. Should have been used more in the passing game and swings and screens and stuff. But That's he was dropping the ball, Bruce. Oh, he was he, dropping he, the ball. I don't know what – I well, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get, get off on a tangent. We better hope that we better hope He clearly was not doing the right things to allow him to be the best player he could be because right. he was a train wreck at a lot of different levels. Well, and, but also, too, you got to understand this, too. 
not all the time these kids get along with their position coach. Yep. And that's another thing that people don't take into account, that sometimes they don't get off on the right foot with the position coach and, you know, they blame the position coach and they say, I'm, I'm leaving because I don't like him or he doesn't like me and they, they haul butt. You know, that's that's always a tough one because, you know, you know it's going to come to that. I mean, I had it happen with me with Jeff Bidette and, uh, you know, he was second or top five in the country in yards per catch at Kentucky. But we just, I, we just, you know, and he transferred. He came in the exec, uh, into the exit meeting, and I was going to ask him to transfer, but he came in and said he was going to Oklahoma, and I, I dapped him up and gave him a high five, saying, "Man, you're making the right decision, homeboy." <laughs> you know, it's just we just didn't mesh, you know. And I, I needed control of that room, and as an alpha male, I'm like, you know, if I. If I, if I get this guy out of the room, the room will be better, you know. And that's sometimes it, it, the, the, the dynamics of it force guys to say they need to go elsewhere or we say, hey, man, you might want to go somewhere else. And he had a golden opportunity. Citizen got hurt in the preseason and Shady got hurt right away. Mm-hmm. He had it sitting right, he, right in his lap. All he had to do was not fumble the ball and run for six or 700 yards and he would have been okay. Now we're sitting here hoping that Cheney and Citizen get healthy for next year, which I don't know the answer to. Do you have any updates, Gary, at all? Uh, well, Cheney, uh, no, I don't. He I came I, back at the end and played, but that means yeah. he could trip on a but, nail and be out for six months. But no, I don't have an update yet on Citizen. He's got a, he still has a little bit of a road ahead of him. All right, let's take a minute here, guys. We got a special guest in the lobby now, a guy that we're, I know we're all looking forward to talk to. But first, let's hear from our friends at Canesware. Welcome to Canesware. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has all the latest merchandise for the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Inner Miami Soccer, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of I-595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. All right, LT, here's the guy that I know is on your holiday shopping list uh, when you go do that holiday shopping at Canesware. That's our main man, Kennard Lang, back in the building. How are you, Kennard? <laughs> Fine, Seth. How you doing? What's up? What's up, K. Lang? K. What's Lang. up, LT? What's up, that big dog? What's happening? <laughs> you see what he's wearing? Kennard, he's got that Orlando stuff on. He's dumped Miami. He's heading out to Orlando now, the XFL. Uh, I mean, I mean, you know, no, but this, he did, he, Miami's in his heart, so it's always with him. He just got the Orlando on the outside, and that's where he's working. <laughs> hey, hey, you know I'm coming. You know I'm coming to see you, baby, oh, all day. Oh, you already know. Hey, the first thing I'm gonna do is say, LT, hey, come here, talk to my boy, and tell him how I really is. Then I'm gonna, gonna say, we, I told you we're gonna set up something very special. For your yeah. kids to come on over and uh be a part of the program be able to watch some things uh you know uh so i'm, I'm very we're very happy to have you on the show man and one of the, always from the beginning i i like for people to hear when, why 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 did you come to the university of miami everybody got a great story i know yours ain't gonna be nothing short of that so let's start with that why did you uh, come to the university of miami you know what? All honesty, because the University of Miami reminds me of my high school. Uh, out of mm. all my years of high school, I only lost three games. Mm. And I won a state championship my junior year. And 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 lo and behold, a lot of people don't know, my same high school produced Leon Searcy uh, and Horace Copeland. And that's Manor Evans High School that they had the yeah. numbers on. They had the, the, the green <laughs> and they had the numbers on the helmet. <laughs> yeah, hey, our, our coach what is is a bad Bryant like side, like duplicate. Where like our practices were like that. Where in the aspect of I, I, I remember we I, I can remember to this day it was my freshman year we had inside run. First Ooh. play the Mike like the Sam linebacker came and hit the um, tackle in his mouth and dropped his butt to his knee. He mm. there been around six three probably about three twenty. And I saw blood come out of the side of his mouth. I said, Lord Jesus. I said, this is how it's going to be. But 
And but in hindsight, though, that's the best thing happened for me. But I would say, like, that's what happened. University of Miami came down there. I remember I went to Tony Coley's room on my on my on my tour. He you saw the room and we, you know, talked to him and met the people and, and the family. And high, and high C told me about he said, Hey Lane, this is just like this is just like Evan. You got the players here, the same mentality, and you're gonna win. And that's hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He said, Hey Lane, let me tell you something. <laughs> I get my boy LT, me and my boy LT, we went deep. You know what I'm saying? So you come on down here. You come up down here in the mic yeah. and you dominate. Hey, <laughs> hey he did hey, with a big old smile on his face. With a big smile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so and, and, and that's what it was. And, and high C and high C really really sealed the deal for me. And like, you know, Leon Cersei, he was in the school the same time as my brother. And his mother actually worked with my father, Dr. Phillips. Mm. And my dad asked about how it was, you know, talking to the mom. And that was another deal. So once that happened, that was really like the icing on the cake. What what other schools were? I mean, I know you had a lot oh. of other schools, but what other schools were like in the mix? Mix. I actually I went to go visit Notre Dame on High School Trophy mm -hmm. weekend. So I how, how was that? How was that? How was that? All honestly, yeah, it, it, it's it's different. Yeah, it, it's different as far as like. Not just the weather, just like the just the just the just the the, the just like the atmosphere, just a little mm -hmm. bit different up there. It's nothing negative, but everybody got their own. But it, it was just it was just different. Okay. Um, then from there, I visit UF, which I didn't like. What okay. you didn't like my whole town? Hey, can I be honest with you? Go it's ahead. Like, it, it, it's like it was a big front. Oh. Everything there was 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 is, is a perfect. Is, is like it's a dog and pony show. Smoke was it perfect? Was it perfect? Was it like perfect? <laughs> like the dorms, everything yeah. was perfect. Oh, the, it was it was no nah, because because they stayed in the stadium. Remember oh, they stayed in Yon Hall, Yon Hall. Yeah, I was like no, and it was just, it was just different. And and like my parents told me, I'm be honest with you. My dad said, son, I'm gonna tell you. We you can go here, look all you want, but you ain't going here. I'm like, <laughs> I said, okay, dad, I understand. And and it comes by the two, it comes long back with history, it's different, whatever. But then from there, I was supposed to go visit Clemson. Mm. I remember to this day, Coach Stocks, I was going to go visit Miami. So at night, after the, I went to Coach G off, I said, Coach G, hey, I'm coming. You ain't got to tell me no more. I'm committed. <clears throat> so the last visit I was supposed to go was go to Clemson. It was Coach Stocksfield. I remember this today. He was probably one of the coolest out of all the recruiters. He was probably one of the coolest ones when the aspect, he said, you know what? Hey, I respect your decision. I still understand. Young man, I wish you the best. Hmm. But now, that was one of them. Now, that's that, that school you talking about in your own time? Big dog, let me tell you what them fools say. I committed to Miami. I ain't gonna tell you which recruiter it was. He came to my school that next day on Monday and he said, You going to Miami? I said, Yeah. He said, You don't look like a Miami guy. I'm like, okay, so what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> what, what, what is it, Miami guy? But well, I'm not telling you that I'm supposed to look a certain way. Dude, from that point, that, that rubbed me wrong. I mean, they that that I still remember that from that school up there where all them the, the tab holes. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, but when it came down to it, tab holes. <laughs> University of Miami, it was was like was the ultimate choice, and it was the best thing that ever happened for me. Just growing up as a man, playing football, most important to being around guys who love football, had the same spirit. And, and I'll probably say that family atmosphere mm. where it really felt like a family. So I remember to this day, I ain't gonna talk too much, but I remember when I was in the locker room as a freshman, and I remember you came struggling to that, oh, oh, start clapping. I said, oh, I'm gonna hit the back door. So that's all I'm gonna say. I ain't gonna say no much more than that. But you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every time I was a freshman, I'm like, oh, when you hear that, you hear that noise, you know, something about it. Uh -uh, I'm gonna hit the back door. So, but the 
Ray Ballard, though, a lot of cats don't realize. With that thing that happened, you feel had. I remember when Russell Maryland came back. I remember when Michael Irvin came out there when we had seven on seven practice with us. He backed this ball, four run up to the turf. He put on his cleats. Hey, guys, bam, bam. Hey, let's go away. Then you had an LJ used to come out there. Mike Barrow used to come out there. So, the saying that, that's why I say how the payment figure versus Miami is cool. That's how it is. My bad. I know we got off topic. I'm talking too much. But no, no, no. No, you, no, you good. I mean, you know, we always <clears> – <throat> we try to get the viewers to understand because, you know, obviously we're not doing that well. well we didn't do that well this year, but we like to hear yeah. these these great – uh, stories about the, the culture of the locker room, the culture of the team, you know, the things that we think that they are definitely lacking in now. I mean, when you got there as a freshman and you got to be engrossed in this, I'm pretty sure you were like, wow, man. Wow. Uh, all honesty, I didn't understand the magnitude of it until I got there. I thought I knew. But when I got there, I really understood the magnitude, like where I'm at, where like where it's freshman. So I probably say I was I was more I probably say I was a big guy, where like it, it, like I was like uh, it's more than just being around that amount of talented guys and just watching the talent that's out there. Just like damn, you know what I mean? It, it was that, that I probably say anything that's what kind of caught me off guard, kind of had me off when I was there. But as far as playing wise, this the ability I kind of felt I had. But I'll probably say my was it my freshman year when I started. I remember Warren came to me. If you're talking about like the older guys, just kind of listen, which I think is kind of different now. I remember I hug, we about to play ruffles. Warren said, hey look here, bro. Hey, go ahead and shut up. All right. Hey, just listen to me, do what I say. And you be straight. Now, one, I'm see, a lot of people don't know. One night, we got a great relationship. We both from Orlando. Okay. So, when he told me that, you know, most cat might get offensive, like, man, who are you talking to? But that's what we had in that huddle. We're like, okay, you respected each other, but everybody's held accountable the same way. And we had a whole bunch of um, Indians. There wasn't no chiefs. So, if, you, if one person mess up, each person get cussed out. Now, don't think you can't get cussed out. Everybody get cussed out. But in saying that, he told me that, and I just listened. In my freshman year, I ended with 10 sacks and had like the um, Big East fresh rookie of the year, freshman year. But the reason I come back to saying that is this. Now, a lot of cats can't take heed to that. Hey, man, just shut up and listen to me. I know you got questions, but listen to me, let's roll. It's that trust factor. We got to get that, that trust factor back, that, that vision and believing. And that's no, you, you say you is, say is, that to Mark, is that possible to get that back again? You got. I'll ask both of them, the two of you. Is it possible? This is this is a whole different world we're living in now. It's me and me and me. And you guys came in, and all the guys that I know from LT's team or your team, they all had a couple of the common denominators. They were hungry. They had yeah. chips on their shoulder, and they busted each other's asses um, as a as a family and as a unit. I, it's more individuality now than I've ever seen in the last 40 mm -hmm. years. Can we ever get that back? I don't even know if Mario can get that back. What but, do you think? I a lot of that, to me, is culture of, from where you came from. Oh, the that's high school scene you was on. And the high, high school, some of that is how you play. Trust me, you're going to have some that kind of have that, but it's like, more or less is believing in each other and not identity and, and believing in, I guess, in the concept that you have as a team and a philosophy. And but also doing that, you know, it, it matters the right people that you have around and can coach you as well. That, that, that practice in. I mean, I probably said I know my first year there, I had um got a dog on um, Coach Petrie and Coach Mark. Shoot, they were my first two coaches there. And the thing about it is, is, is like whatever Coach E preached, they echoed. And the thing about it, though, and they had it, held each other accountable. It echoed to the whole team, and that's just how it was. So, and it's that's what I say. It's a five bounce of doing that, but so you, you, you can recruit what kind of guy you get. All right. So, like to me, I was very fortunate. I used to work the Nike circuit, 
So I do. I work with the four stars and the five star the guys that went first round. You know, Ray Sean <laughs> Gary and the other boy, um, the boy Robinson. You know, all the other guys. Boy, play for Buffalo, the defensive tackle. Well, one thing about it, just because you're a four star had uh, ability, don't mean you got a four or five star heart. Mm. Okay. Mm. So a lot of people might have these stars because they see the ability catching the ball and doing this. But what's their heart like? And what is their work ethic like? And what they play like? And I bring up two people. I know who my recruit in my recruiting class who wasn't no four or five star who ended up being pretty darn good. Like Atil Green came from Lake City. He wasn't that big four or five star, but when they came to set up, but he was the ball, he played. And the last one, shoot, we ain't got to say much. We talking about Ray Lewis. Yeah, yeah. So my theory is this. You get ball players. Four or five star, that might be the cool, but you get ball players. Like the old school, say get ball playing Jesses. That's what you got to get. Then you kind of fit them in and try to go where they need to be and, and roll from there. Shoot, I supposed to come in and play middle linebacker. I remember mm. they lied. <laughs> I'm coming there to say, you gonna, you take it. I remember Ed on his road. No, this is you gonna do. You gonna take Mike Barrow's spot. You gonna be in the middle. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there looking like I'm bigger than Mike Barrow right now. And I'm coming out of high school. So, <laughs> I remember I got to my locker. I opened my locker. Ninety six. I don't remember no linebackers wearing no 96 and they didn't look that they got you too. They got you. <laughs> they got but, you. But but in saying that though, is this I came there as a middle linebacker, but I ended up putting my hand down in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Danny Holmes, same way. So in essence, sometimes you get the athletes, you just gotta put them in the spot that fit best for them and make the team successful where and they a football player. You mm -hmm. just don't have no one trick pony. So that that's just my little little thought on it. You know what I mean? Get get football players. Four well, last stars okay to good, but get football players. Well, that's what Mario's trying to do, Kennard. And I yeah. and, yeah. and if anybody's yeah. gonna do it, that's why Gary keeps saying it over. It's gonna be him. Because he knows mm -hmm. what he's looking for. And the guys on this team this year, yeah, are not the guys that he would want to go to war with. And that's why he's weeding them out. He's he's doing his due diligence. Will they be significantly better next year hopefully are they going to mm -hmm. compete for the title of course not but the year after that and after that look out oh, yeah. gonna have a bunch of Kennard langs and lamar thomas's and and ed reeds and and michael barrows and all those guys that are in there in the practices busting her ass making the games easier which is what all you guys have been telling us for the last couple of years on this show those practices were harder than the damn games oh. most Oh yeah, hell yeah. See, I remember uh when damn Andrew James was a freshman. Dude, I'll tell you, <laughs> I remember to this day we had an inside run. So E so EJ, they ran a they ran a power play. So he took his jab step and went to go hit front side. He saw that backside A gap, boom, and hit it. But why he hit that, he looking at you and laughing and going. And he was like, I be damn. He's like, okay, man, this boy can't be this damn good. But every day he's a kill up on the scout team. And lo and behold, he was a damn, he's getting to be pretty damn good. So to answer your question, to say what you're saying, practice is where harder. And I do believe in Mario. Because like a lot of people don't know, my first year there, when Mario was a GA, he was my weightlifting guy. Mm -hmm. So we built a relationship talking then and, and talking and believing. And he always been the same cat since then. And even when he left to go climb up the ladder and coaching level, and that I talked to him, so I got full belief in him. And most important, he got backing from everybody here, a lot of people here, and that's which is which is a good thing. You know, you got you got what ten years? Was it ten years in the league? Yeah, was it ten? <clears throat> when you when you decide to step away from the game, what made you decide to go into high school coaching? Man. You know what? All I, I say, every team I was on, I was always appointed like the captain. Yeah. And then whenever a young cat come, the coach, D-line coach always told me, hey, get him and work with him. Yeah. 
And in doing that, then kids always kind of gravitated to me. And so I kind of say, you know what? I, I kind of want to do that. And, um, and actually, it's been, it's been real awesome, to be honest with you. I probably say, you know, of course, I'm trying to win state championships and everything. But right. when you see a lot of kids' lives change, it's like awesome. Where like a lot of like first generation college students. Mm -hmm. So now you like, oh man, you know what? You know, coaching football is cool, but now you're really making an impact on a on a kid's life. Because now shoot, he now he's gonna go to college where his parents couldn't go to. So mm -hmm. in, in essence, like I like it really love like that, because that's really the big reward at the end. Do I want to win state championships and all that stuff? Absolutely, but when you see a kid get a chance to change a life in his family cycle, make it better, I mean, there's, there's no better feeling. So, and, and then you get your job, you get your opportunity at Jones, right yeah. right outside right outside the, the confounds of the uh, Camping World Stadium. I mean, that's basically on the same campus almost, right? I mean, yes. they, they, they that my, close. Yeah, so my first year coaching high school football was there because my alma mater, where I'm at now, it was already occupied. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they were looking for a coach. And everybody knew back then, it was one of the schools that always had talented kids. But always. Like Gainesville they, East Side. Coach. So shoot, <laughs> like our first year there, man, we made the playoffs. Um, they had made the playoffs in 15 years. My first wow. year there, we made the playoffs. And um, shoot, how about this? My first high school game ever coaching was against my Aldemar. Wow. Yeah. And then, yeah, we, we beat them 31 to nothing. And they retired my jersey on that night. <laughs> <laughs> that was sweet. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but, so, uh, yeah. And then you, you moved on to, and I always mess this name up. You got to help me. Wa Wakibia? Was it Wakibia? See, I knew I was yeah. going to mess it up. <laughs> now, I, I went to Wakibia afterwards because, uh, like, I left Jones. I kind of not say I was quite a. I always had a chance to have some more resources, and the person that was in charge really wouldn't help me as much. So, right. and also, too, Akaba was the biggest school. I said, you know what? I went there, and I actually, shoot, same thing. We made the playoffs my second year. That's their first year as a school of sisters ever making the playoff. And, like, shoot. And on that team, check this out. So, on that team, they started for me as a freshman. The safety from uh, Pitt, Brandon Hill. Mm hmm he was my he was my starter safety as a freshman. The boy Tyler Davis, the defensive tackle at Clemson, he was playing for me as a freshman. Wow. And I had another boy who went to Georgia, Ryan Davis. Had another boy Pollock, who's a star D tackle D Tech. He was there as a freshman. So wow. dude, so like yeah, so with Kaiba that year, I had like seven D one kids that were like freshmen, which was like. Then I left there. Then I ended up going down to FIU. So FIU was cool, get the college experience and all. Um, it was great. Oh, um, but I realized it's a lot more dang time than mm -hmm. you know than what it is. So then after that, I had a chance to come back and coach my alma mater back here at Evans High School. I said, you know what? It was opportune time, and now my family's here, my mom and dad, and get a chance to spend time with them and. And, and do something that I love, and and you can't do nothing wrong with that. I got my kids, my girls, get to see them a lot more now since I'm not doing college doing high school. So it, it just kind of, everything kind of flowed right into place. So I know it's the Lord blessing me, and I just roll with it, and I tell them thank you. Well, I, I tell you this, man. Um, again, we had a meeting the other day, and we talked about um, being able to get um, the coaches that we know and give me to get their teams to the stadium and give yeah. them that VIP treatment. And you're going to be one of the first people I call in Orlando to get your team to come to the game. Now it's going to oh, be important. Oh, we, we, hey. we, we look, we look forward to, to being yeah. engrossed in the, in the community. Thank you. Thank you. And also to Lamar, I'll tell you now, you know, I'm going to tell you, yeah, talk to him. Oh yeah, that's come on, man. I love to talk, man. Come on. Oh, know, yeah. I, yeah, all You're day like, I come. You might have to just say, hey man, don't come back tomorrow. Come on, man. Stop, <laughs> stop. stop man. Stop. Nah. I mean, practice. You know how it was we was all growing up. Like if yeah. my dad or uncle said it, you know, we didn't believe it. But yeah. somebody outside and said the same yes. thing. Hey, you know yeah. what? So sometimes <laughs> you might hit them like that. So 
That's all. Well, we, we're going to definitely try to do some things in Orlando, uh, in that area. And, you know, now, you know, obviously having some friends of the program, which I consider yeah. you, we're going to try to get uh, your program involved. So, man, we, we, we definitely appreciate you coming on here tonight, man. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, so let me ask you this. What the pressure of having the state championship in Orlando was that pressure of like you know you know you want to get there because it's, it's right there you right there. I say it is it is an aspect. I remember we used to practice and you can see the citrus ball right there behind oh. and you see that man. That's oh. what we try to get to all the time. <laughs> but it was easy for me. To, it was good for me. That's easy motivation. Yeah, I used to point right over there. And then, and then we were trying to get to, you know, and, and kind of go from there. Everything, but shoot, hey, but also too, I like to tell the Canes Nation now. Also too, by me coaching high school football, all my best kids, I try to send them back two to you. So I want to <laughs> hey, for for example, y'all got my say night night night. Or Keith Williams, he's doing good. Yeah, hey, now he now he, now he from my school now. I got another safety back there with him, same way. So y'all, so Kane's Nation, no. Coach Lane, Kennard Lane, number 96, in the books, number one in your heart. Was- <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey Kennard, I, I was going to say something because you called, I was going to say, hey, man, you're a high school coach. You can't say tadpoles. Come on, man. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, I got respect everybody. You, you got to respect everybody. You got to respect it. Oh, well, hey, bro. It's to me like that Kennard's going to have these kids come to Miami and not be involved in any NIL money. Because it's, 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 he, he's they gotta got to get their money now. They got to get their money. They're going to pay Miami to come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get their money. Everybody going to get their money. <laughs> yeah. No, well, but, man, but all honesty, though. But, like, for real, though, like, I'll tell all my kids how great the experience is. Yeah. And I always want them to go. And um, and I always try to push my kids that you know I gonna let them go where they want, but most importantly, trust me. University of Miami is always the first influence I give them. To tell you how great this university is. I got my degree from there, and it done great things for me. So trust and, me. And to- and and on top of that, you lived on campus your whole time there. Hey, and I loved it. <laughs> uh, this I love staying on campus. Cold games right there, and we had we had heroes. Down there and everything. He had all this stuff. He had big cheese. That man said, there's no way I'm going to move on campus. I got everything I want right here. I was the same way. I lived on campus all four years. I I wasn't going anywhere. It was too much fun. Hey, because think about it. Because think about it. You had the the cafeteria. I stayed in Mahoney. You rolled out of bed. Where my class? I got to go to math for the lecture building. It's right there. Why want to? Take like 45 minutes trying to find somewhere to park. Mm-hmm. Way over at the art building. I got to walk way across. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> they Smart all man. Mahoney worked just fine. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. And the rat skeleton wasn't that bad every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Kennard, Mar- Markeith is doing a pretty good job. I think you're going to see him play a little bit next year. Yes. Uh, and um, I saw the last game. When I got on, when he sent them on the blitz, he came up the edge. Look, he, he's kind of aggressive. He, he's a thump. I, I look forward. And he also, he almost had a chance to make a pick. But the thing about Marquis, he's a football player. We're like, we're like, he going to pop. He's a football player. That's one of the things I like about him. So well, I, 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 I think he's going to do well. I'd love to see them move James Williams to linebacker and let him go back there with Cam. You know what? Hey. Like this, you, you never know. You never know, especially with the defense and now, how they kind of manipulate it anyway with the personnel group, how it is. I mean, you never know. Because one thing about we all know about football, when it comes to a coach, some way sort of fast, y'all got to try to get your best 11 on the field. Mm-hmm. Right. So how would that be? That, that's, that's how it got to be. Because that's why I think high school football teaches. <laughs> Ain't no out there drafting, no getting no kids. Shoot, we got little Tim who still look at his little ear holes in his helmet. You better be able to spot him to play. That's all you got. Well, thank you, man. We appreciate you, no man. I'm going to see you when we get over there in the big old. All right, brother? All right, brother. I know nice little couple of seafood restaurants we can hit up. Bet. There you go. There you go. Seafood restaurant. Great seeing you, Kennard. More life. More life. More life.
<laughs> All right, brother. Have a great Thank night tonight. Thank you. I appreciate for having me. Thank you, fellas. You well, man. All right. How awesome is he, man? <laughs> that was great. I'm sure he's telling all those real good players, go to Miami. I'm, I mean, they're not getting all these kids, but still, that's what you want to hear. It's not, I, don't I, mean, hear like that, then, gee, I don't say anything to these kids. In the meantime, my phone's going crazy right now. The men's basketball team had a game tonight against Cornell. You know what the final score was? 107-105. <laughs> Wow. Did we win? They won. Okay. 107, 105. Oh, Isaiah Long right. hit 36. I mean, I want to know how Coach Laranega allowed them to play no defense like that. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's insane. Up and down, up and down. That's yeah, we're gonna that, have to but that's have, not good. Hey man, we're gonna have to do a cane sport uh basketball media pass so I can go down there. Right. We gotta cover we gotta cover basketball too. You got a couple. You got a couple weeks before you got to head up. To yeah, Atlanta. a couple. Weeks. I'm gonna go down there. You know, walk around, kiss some babies, sign some autograph, watch some good basketball, eat some popcorn. I also, you like, you know, yeah, ass. in all, in all seriousness, Lamar, and we'll talk about this off the show. But I got four tickets that you, if you want to take your kids and stuff, okay. no problem. Yeah. Well, you know, I always, I, I always try to go down there and at least get one game in, but I also try to go um, to watch the women's play because you know. Because my relationship with with uh, you know my sister and, and, and coach down there, um, I love her. She does a great job, man. She's awesome. It's well, they'll good- pay they'll pay you to go to the women's games. They're, they're it's like almost <laughs> empty. Uh, you know, I well, thought they got the Cavender twins, these social media yeah. darlings with all their followers and everything. They're not following them into the arena. I'll tell you that. Hey, <laughs> you know. Well, I know when my sister was there, man. It was it was it was uh, it was good to watch, man. They. Katie does a good job down there. She right. does. She de- she deserves her respect. Hey, I know we're jumping around a little bit, but these guys on uh, the YouTube yeah. chat are, are are working a little bit. So let's let's uh, give them a little love, yeah. Lamar. Uh, yeah. Caesar Iglesias, he wants to know: Are the renderings of the facilities on par to expectations, or are we short? I don't know how you could have expectations that are short when you're spending 150 million, Lamar. Yeah, and it's new. I mean, that shit over there. That place over there is an old rundown building, uh, the Hect. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it's 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 old, and so you try to, you know, I was trying to figure out how they were yeah, going. They were going to go up. They were going to go up because they couldn't go out because it's landlocked. Or what they were going to do? So you know, anything is going to be better. And to be honest with you, in today's age, kids just want to be, you know, to wherever they're like uh, bells and whistles that attracts kids. Uh, the um, let's see. The oh, somebody's saying that the uh, the Jerkovich kid went to Pittsburgh. That's not good. Uh, you know, the kid from Boston College, mm-hmm. he went to Pittsburgh in the portal, and uh, that makes Pittsburgh better. That's not uh, that is not a um, a good thing at all. Um, you know, back in the day, you couldn't transfer inside the inside the conference, right? <clears throat> now they don't care. So, uh, so LT, yes. uh, so the the coaches are out recruiting, mm-hmm. uh, and you know they'll they'll do that now, and then they're gonna have to take inventory, and see how many spots they still need to to lose here in the portal. Correct. Those are not easy conversations. No, they are. You know, I, I mean, how do you tell a kid? You know, it's it's not you gotta you just gotta know it's your job to yeah get it right. Yeah, it's um you know what you try to do is you try to go you bring them in and you try to go to the uh and I'm bending down on purpose, you try to go to to the folder up under the desk and you pull it out and you have all these things that they've done. You gotta you know, you gotta have your stuff on them you know hey man you you missed class like 80 times you missed workouts you didn't perform on the field you got to give them good reasons why you trying to get them out of there they have to you can't just the guys that hadn't done anything wrong he's just not a good player i mean maybe you can tell them that and maybe you tell them hey we can help you go someplace else but for the most part sometimes kids kind of most of these kids that are transferring they kind of Hang their own neck. 
and well, you just have to document it. Well, you would assume most of these kids know their neck is in the noose. Yeah, you know they you know it. They know it's coming. Uh, that's why I'm saying some of these. I'm surprised more haven't gotten into the portal, unless they're just hanging in by a thread and they they still want to be here. And it's really not their call. If they stay, they stay. And if they're told they have to leave, they'll be sad, but they'll go. Because I'm sure there's a lot of kids that don't want to leave. The guys that left wanted to leave. I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know. But to get the axe like that. <laughs> It's kind of like the NFL, you know, when they say turn in your playbook. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've always been under the assumption, like, you know, when parents, like I would always tell guys, don't have your parents call me about playing time. I talk to them about how you're doing as a person, you know, social life, that type of deal. But I'm not going to talk to them about playing time. And if they do somehow are able to get in contact with me or they see me after a game or something like that, I say, hey, come to practice. Your kid knows why he's not playing, okay? He knows what he's doing, whether he's not going to class or not showing a weight room. Some shit he's doing is causing me not to play. I'm not going to wake up in the morning and say, hey, you know what? I'm just not going to play this guy. No, you have to actually do something that I can document. And it's all document. You have to document things in order for to go to the head coach and say, hey, this is a candidate for us to get rid of. And they know. So I'd say, hey, do you want practice tape? Because I can get some practice tape. Do you want to come to practice anytime? Just come, but I'm not going to talk to you about why. You will see once you watch your kid. And again, most people think their kids are great. <laughs> it's a slap in the face to see they suck. But some of these kids may do everything right and just might not be good. It's just not good enough. Some that's a hard just, one. To tell these that's guys a, that's a real home. hard one. But what you try to say as a coach, you say, "Hey, man, I'm going to help you." Okay. I'm going to make some calls and try to get you in a good – so some of those kids, they, they they do everything right, and they're good for the program, but you might need that spot, or you sometimes do keep guys like that because they are good for the program because, remember, it's about that culture in the locker room, and I don't care how many five stars you bring in this bitch. If it's a bad culture in that locker room, they're going to suck. And once they once they lose one or two games – Shit goes down here, man. It just explodes. It implodes. That's what's happened the last eight or ten years. There's yeah, been it implodes. Stuff that goes on. That it's, it's, I, it's, I just hope. I hope they get nil deals before they're set free. So if they needed to finish their education, or you know, I mean, to me, that's the important thing is that they get to get their degree if they want it. Well, you they know. should make again going on to my nil deal. If they if they kick you out. Then you you should get like a portion of it. <laughs> well, I, they're not. I don't think they're tied together. And uh, you know, I just hope that the you know yeah. I, they got to do what they got to do. They can't. The University of Miami football program cannot keep going five and seven. <laughs> okay, they got to get this roster improved. They need spots. Yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, sure. But. You know, those kids hopefully will still get taken care of. The ones that I deserve. Hope, I hope they upgrade that coaching staff because I don't. I'm not convinced. So, so anyway, you want so you want to upgrade the coaching staff? Where where are the upgrades coming in? What this? Let's see what you got, Bruce. Where? What do you? I don't, need? I don't know the other offensive coordinators. All I know is that I had a problem with him from the first game, and you guys know it. That's all I'm saying. Mm. I saw things that I could never believe that they didn't call or they didn't do or they didn't use certain scenarios. You know, when you we don't score for ten quarters, when you struggle in the red zone for the first four or five, whatever it was, and I, I'm you know, and the quarterback who was spectacular last year looked like crap most of the season. And it's concerning to me. LT, was it a mistake? He's like a scapegoat, Gary. Was but he's he's hamstrung with a horrible offensive line. But that doesn't mean the play calling couldn't have been better and should have been better. Was it a mistake to change the offense? I don't know no. if everybody's. I don't know if everybody is is um is Lashley. I don't know if everybody thinks like he does, but they were a hell of a lot better last year. But yes, they did. They had they had Rambo. They had Harley, and they had a healthy Restrepo. They had a healthy Zion Nelson. They had healthier players. Healthy, so, healthier line for sure. A healthier yeah, offensive line. Not, not necessarily better, but healthier for sure. But healthier, right? And so that and, yeah. and as we've always talked with their offensive line, with Bryant or or or, or Leon. You have to have the the unity together. They didn't Absolutely. have that. They had no cohesiveness yeah. whatsoever. 
And you know what? Next year, if they bring in these other two new kids and they bring in this Cohen kid, they still might not have because they've never played together. So, you know, all things have to build from a base, a foundation going forward. And this year was a disaster. Maybe that's the maybe that's the saving grace for Gaddis is that he was he had his one hand tied behind his back. I'm still not convinced him. Richard Hill said he love our, he loves our coaching staff. <laughs> he loves it. I mean, I mean to visit Miami. I, I, hey, I, I look at it like this. You know what? Get those guys another year. I Let's guess. see what happens. Let's right. see what happens because not only are they going to have to coach better. They're also going to have to be mental coaches too, you know, because you're bringing in a lot. You're you're bringing in a lot of different faces into your yeah. program, whether it's freshmen or transfers. You got to be able to pull this all together. I mean, obviously it starts from the top, but a lot of it is also on your position coaches and your your staff. So they're going to have to do a good job of helping these guys mesh. Yep, yeah. um, being a team. Uh, I look at a lot of these guys that are transferring. There are me guys because they're transferring because of me. Yeah, and, I, and you know what? What, what Gaddis is, is it, we can blame him for things, but you know Mario doesn't want to be um, Lashley type offense either. It's not just Gaddis. That's right. You know, Mario wants to be able to knock people on their ass, run the ball, and then physical things off of that. But people talk right about right. the spread, like the, the word spread. Okay, Lamar, when you watch that Josh Gaddis offense this year, how what, what what was it? Like, what would you call it? I, I wouldn't. It wasn't I, a pro, just a pro. I, yeah, style. I can't. I, I I don't know what. I, I still don't know the identity of it. I mean, I yeah, like yeah, like like that. Dennis Lopez says, "Go back to the real <laughs> spread offense, not this fake spread that we were running." Like, what's a real spread? Yeah. What's a fake spread? I mean, you tried to run the ball and you couldn't run it, and then you tried to, because you your offense also was predicated off of play action passes. I mean, you can't do that when you can't run the ball. What the hell is going the ball. on? With play action, you're going to get killed. It's but not- that, but it, but is that is that his fault? Maybe he has a plan. You know, uh, obviously, maybe it worked at Michigan, and so give a guy another year and let's see what happens. I mean. Yeah, the but line, look, if it, look at against yeah. offensive line. My goodness. If the so, line, if the yeah, line in, they're going to get his ass fired. Yeah. But, but LT, I come back again. Like, so he he walks in here mm-hmm. and he's inheriting a quarterback that's threw for 300 yards in the final six games that he played Correct. last year. Uh, so what they were doing was working. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't his offense. Correct. But. And, and and I'm not like I'm only asking this because you're now the assistant head coach of the Orlando Guardians. Like you, you got some bread, okay? And and uh, <laughs> it, it's like I see coaches do this all the time. They have right. their offense, their system, and they're going to go in and install what they do. Mm-hmm. But was it a mistake in this case? Let me tell you this. I know, on Mario's I, part to hire him? Well, no, just on Gat. I, I don't think it mattered who Mario hired. It, it's like you're. Yeah, you're he a, wanted to know his offensive philosophy. He's not going to hire a guy who has no. I know, but Mario, listen, but listen, Bruce, I've had this conversation with so many people. Mario tried to get Rob Chazinski, who's a pro style NFL offensive coordinator. Mario tried to hire Ken Dorsey, who is an NFL coordinator for the, the Buffalo the head, Bills. The head coach from Kent State, too, right? Candle. Yeah, yeah, at Candle at, at Toledo. So, Toledo, I'm sorry. So, so, so here's the, the thing. They're not running Mario's offense, okay? This is not the Mario Cristobal offense. Mario will adapt to whoever he hires as a coordinator. Uh, he's not, you know, he wants a power running game as part of that offense, but you can have a power running game in a pro-style offense. You can have a power running game in a spread offense. Uh, you know, you, you can run the ball. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that I say on, on, on all of this as far as, you know, Gaddis, you know, the, the, the coordinator, he need they need to evolve. I know it's not his offense, but I go back to Bobby Petrino, who might be one of the stubbornest people I've ever met. <laughs> SOBs. <laughs> SOB, <laughs> SOB, but you know what? He said, screw this. Yeah. This talent that I have here. I'm going to do what he's better at and then bring along my stuff too. 
because he tried to force the other stuff on him, and we got the doors blown off against Houston. Yes. And it took him a while to figure out, let me run what he's good at and then bring the other my other stuff along with him. Along with it, yeah. Along with him. So he That's evolved. kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. Now he evolved, and he said, you know what? Hey, man. That's why the kid, you in and, and everywhere that kid is going, we're talking about Lamar Jackson. Every coach he's had, whether it was Rick Swain at high school who ran the wing T, when he got Lamar Jackson, he said, What the hell am I running? Let me run what he's good at. Yeah. Got to Louisville where Petrino had his great offense with the playbook this thick. Now nah, let me run what he's good at, and then we bring along my stuff, and now we make it even more dynamic. Get to the Ravens. That whole offense is set up around him. Okay. It ain't the same Ravens offense when they had uh what was the quarterback before that? Um dang, what's his name? He I don't even know. He's at the Jets. Flacco, now. Joe Flacco. 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 It ain't Flacco's offense because they you remember the year that when Flacco was there, they put Lamar in and it was a different offense. But the next year it took off. So you have to be able to also do what suits your quarterback strength no too. You well, can't just come in with your own uh, offense. The Dolphins this year, Lamar. The Dolphins. Dolphins offense was last year's with Rambo, Harley, mm-hmm. and Restrepo. He mm-hmm. comes down here from Michigan, and those guys aren't there anymore. Well, Restrepo was being in play. So yeah. you can't add something when what he had before is now gone. The kid needed some guidance. and needed some help. And, and with the offensive line as bad as it was, no wonder he was jittery in the pocket. That, 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 line, that, that line in Michigan, I'm pretty sure it, wasn't, it didn't look like this. Didn't look right. like this, no. Yeah. And, and like the thing is, LT, he, he started to adapt at he North tried. Carolina. North tried. Carolina week, they threw for almost 500 that week. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. against the Virginia Tech, I think they had 350 or something. Yeah. And then Van Dyke gets hurt. Yeah. But, 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 remember, but remember, one of the, the – Telltales for me of the whole season when the quarterback said, now me and the coordinator and the quarterback coach are now sitting down and we're yeah, talking that was, about that. That's was, hard to believe. That, that, was, that was weird to me because I just couldn't fathom. Um, you don't sit down and you don't get the plays where he likes. He's the one that's out on the field. You might like plays, but he's the one that has to feel comfortable. Well, that's that's exactly what these calls. Told us. Steve Walsh backed you up on that. He said, yeah. "Are you kidding me? That's what they're doing." He couldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah. So there was more to it. Than, yeah, than, to than, it. than it's come to the public light. And Look, it's Zion was out, and he loses citizens. So you really lose the three receivers, you a lot. running back, and your star offense. What do you expect? I mean, yeah. I'm not saying he's great, but I think he has to get another chance. So I yeah, think- he definitely get another chance. I, yeah. I'm wanting to get another. Chance. Yeah, I think he will too. Um, at least it looks that way right now, unless it's his choice to. Yeah, to maybe go. he might get. Maybe he might go somewhere. Maybe he might get a head job. But I, I think he deserves another chance. I mean, I, I, you know, that's a lot to to bring your offense down here and things go wrong as far as guys getting hurt, you know, injuries, and you don't have the full uh, complement of, of players to be able to. Um, Run what you want, right? That's and the I good think. thing is, that you'll be with with the Guardians, and you won't hear me next year bitching and complaining. <laughs> no, uh, uh-uh. uh, the Guardian is only for four months, man. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah, I'll be back. He's not going anywhere. We not selling. The, we're not selling the palatial estate out there in Broward County. We we do we doing this again, <laughs> right. and we're gonna get some more sponsors too. We're gonna be we're gonna be sponsored up like a race car. <laughs> like <T-Bot. laughs> All right, uh, speaking of sponsors, let's take uh, another moment here and let's hear from our friends at Caneswear. Welcome to Caneswear. Family owned and operated since 2010, Caneswear has all the latest merchandise for the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Inner Miami Soccer, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of I-595, or online at Canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. They didn't send you any specials this week or anything, right? No, no, no. It's just pure holiday shopping at Canesware. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's holiday. (laughs) So, so LT, what do you got planned, man? Tell us what you got planned. What, what, what's, daddy, what's daddy daycare doing with the kids? Well, we're probably going to 
being viral um, for the holidays with the in-laws and, you know, just, just, hey, just enjoying, just enjoying each other. You know, I, I, I just feel like, you know, these kids, man, they're, they're a blessing and it's going to, you know, daddy's going to be away for a couple of, for a while. So I got to spend as much time as I can with them. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about, you know, Christmas. This is going to be a good Christmas for us. And, um, we're blessed we're blessed That's all right bruce uh before we let you go um any holiday parting thoughts from you just everybody stay healthy enjoy the holidays be with your family be with your loved ones um lt i mean i'll be talking to you when you're out yeah. of here up in orlando yeah. uh, we got other things we have to talk about obviously yeah. but I, i'm hoping you're successful up there and make make the state proud, uh, and we'll be rooting for you guys. That's for damn sure. Um, all you guys should be shopping at Caneswear for your holiday stuff, and the store is just fabulous. I know the year wasn't great, but that doesn't mean they're not great. They are, and the people that work there, um, and they're just incredible people. Gary, thank you again for letting me do this with you this season. It was not a pleasure, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's better. It was, you know, we got what we wanted. We wanted Mario. We just yeah. have to deal with it now. Yeah, and and that's it. And um, you know, everybody stay happy and stay healthy. And, and we'll, we'll see you guys. I guess when next year. Oh, I'll be on the show. Tuesday yeah. night with you. Yeah, yeah. All right. You're not going anywhere. I ain't we'll going see anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> All right, all right. That's all I have to say. And let's get these recruits locked up. That's what yeah. I want. Like for my. Christmas slash Hanukkah present. That's what I want. I want these recruits locked up. There on you the go. 21st. Well, right, you got, the right, you got the right guy on the case, Bruce. Yep. Take care. All right. We do. Take care. All right, Bruce. All right, LT. Uh, it's been a great year. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think on behalf of all the Canes fans out here, uh, we couldn't be happier for you for this coaching opportunity with the XFL, assistant head coach of the Orlando Guardians. Uh, to go embark on here the next uh, four or five months. And uh, you've been coaching college kids for a while. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of an adjustment. Uh, I, I know that, that these aren't the prima donnas that are in the NFL right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they certainly don't aren't going to have the paychecks. Um, yeah. How do you think but it's going to be? Do you think it'll be a little different for you? No, I, I mean, well, I coached in the AAF with, with uh, that's the Alliance of America Football League with, with Dennis Erickson. So I had a little uh, – a little experience. I've had a little experience coaching in this type of league, so I like it. I, I actually I like it more than college because you know you're dealing with guys that are right there at the cusp, and you still have the carrot in front of their face. And so, you know, when they walk off the field, you just ask them, "Did you get better today? Are you trying to make it to the league, or are you just trying to make this sixty thousand dollars?" Right. You, know, you want to make you know. So it's it's still that carrot in front of them. And I like the fact that we're trying to, and we will teach these kids how to be true professionals because you don't play eight to 14 years in the league without learning how to be a true professional. And what we try to explain to them also is that all it takes is one person to like you in the building, but it also takes one person, the wrong one person, not to like you in the building and they will get rid of you. So you got to be able to, to do it the right way. Well, you're going to have one one advantage over a lot of these college coaches, and you'll be making more money than your players. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> that is true. And, and it's only, you know, again, it's only – I've had some uh, colleges call and inquire, and I said, are you kidding me? Where was, where was this call months ago? Um, I'm going to make X amount of dollars for four or five months, and I still get to spend time with my family. And that is so much better than working year round, probably making a little bit more, but only getting three weeks off. Right. And having to deal with NILs and college kids thinking they're better than you and all this other stuff. So we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I look forward to the off season, keeping in contact with you guys, um, seeing what Miami's doing and, um, you, know, well, you still got your password on the message boards. Oh, yeah, yeah. I still have it. Oh, I, every <laughs> now and then I sneak on there. To, to Don't look. give everybody a little shout out every yeah, now yeah, and then. Yeah, 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 no doubt. No doubt. I mean, I just, 
you know, I'm in Miami. You know, T Buck says it all the time, man. What has Miami done for you? They've done a lot for me, bro. He said, You wear this stuff all the time. I said, Well, I wear it because it's free, and but I also went to school there, and uh, that's my school, and I love it. And uh, you know, I just want to see them get back to more than relevant now. I want to see them be successful. Not just relevant. I want to see them be successful. We were relevant when we brought Mario Cristobal in and everybody was talking about us. But I want to see us go to the next level. And I, I said two to three years. So we'll see where this program is next year. And we'll see where it is the year, year after that. And hopefully we're back to where we're competing for that ACC championship. And maybe even now since they have, what, they're putting 12 teams in the deal? Yeah, maybe we can sneak in there. So it's going to be fun to watch. What fun to watch how he's able to to mold this team, to mold this culture into what he wants, and let's see where it goes. I'm all in for the ride. Well, it looks like he's going to have his quarterback to build around, and you know, people went kind of hard a little bit on Tyler earlier in the season this year, probably un- certainly unjustifiably. I mean, he you know he was being asked to do some different things, and he he struggled with it, no doubt. Um, my guess is they'll get that right by yeah. by September this year. Uh, he was just coming around when he had the injury issues, mm-hmm. and I think he and Gaddis mm-hmm. are kind of evolving with each other, and um, they've got a whole off season now. They yeah. have to for us to be successful. Yeah, and now they have a whole off season to put an yeah. offense together. So hopefully, yeah. uh, if Gaddis is back, they will be able to do that. All right, well, um, obviously, we thank Kennard Lang for coming on tonight. We thank all of the former players and coaches that participated in this show throughout. What is this, about season five of the Lamar Thomas show? Something like that. I feel Something like, like that. that. <laughs> um, you know, but, yeah, I mean, everyone was great. and we, We've had some great guests and yeah. great times on this show this year. And, you know, of course, we thank all of you guys that watched all season long thank and you. hope that you guys have a very happy holidays and, uh, make sure when that XFL comes on, uh, is it ESPN or ABC? ABC, ESPN, yeah. Disney. Oh, we got it all. We yeah. got The Rock, baby. The Rock yeah. has a relationship with all of them. Make sure you're cheering for the Orlando Guardians, okay? Yeah. Um, and LT is uh, – and LT's receivers to have uh, and, big seasons. And my on. special teams. And his special teams, too. <laughs> uh, we won't go into that, but they got some goofy rules in this league. Lamar's yes, they do. That. He's going to get to have a lot of fun drawing things up on special Ooh. teams. So make sure you check those games out. And uh, everybody have a great holiday. And uh, Lamar will be back hopefully next year yeah. uh, for season six, seven, eight, whatever it is whatever of the Lamar is. Thomas show. And for us, the show obviously <laughs> marches on at canesport.com. And we'll see you guys on the website, see you on the message boards. Have a great night, everybody. Go Canes.